episode 214 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 23rd of June. So welcome everybody. I hope you've had a lovely crafty week or two weeks since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last two weeks since the last podcast. So normally I podcast every week. Last week we had a few days off and went to Centre Parks and I popped a tutorial up instead. So I've got a couple of weeks worth of crafting to show you. So I have a couple of make-alongs in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. Hashtags and information on the Ravelry groups are in the description bar down below. But I am going to draw for prizes both for the Craft House Magic Shawl Along 2022 at the end of June um, and also for the next quarter of the Craft 20 a day. So don't forget to get your posts in before I draw for prizes and I'll probably do those in two weeks just to give you a little bit extra over the, the end of the 30th of June. So today we've got some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, a blast from the past, some confessions, which I have gone slightly mad on. Oh dear. <laughs> I have some information on my shop to do with Yarn Club and also there's a little appearance of Jensen at the end of the podcast. So let's go on with the knitting, shall we? So first of all, I've got my progress on my Hokey Locatelli's Sparkle Cardigan. Um, that I have here. So I've done the panel, it's a bit curled up so it does look smaller than it is, um, but I've done the panel of the back just to under the arm and I've also done one side front to under the arm and the second one I've nearly got to the same point. So it looks really small at the moment but I have knitted this before and spoiler alert I'm wearing my sparkle cardigan uh, that I made previously and it will be my blast from the past which I shall show you in the blast from the past section so I know it will fit. Um, but that's how it's looking so far. So I started at the back here, knit down and knitted that panel just to under the arm and then I picked up the stitches at the top here, knitted the front and I'm doing the same on this side. So once I've done that I will then join it in the round and be knitting backwards and forwards for the body which is nice and easy. So the sparkle cardigan is supposed to have texture stitches like this, the lacy stitches, but I did decide to do a plain one in this sort of greeny tealy colour because I thought it'd be nice to have a cardigan that's slightly more wintry, slightly warmer um, for when it's a little bit chillier but I really like the style and design and fit of this pattern so I'm knitting the same one. So for this one I did make crop length sleeves and I also made the bottom of the cardigan just, just go past my waist rather than being a slightly longer cardigan like the pattern suggests and I'm going to do the same with this. So I've dyed up three 100 gram skeins of fingering weight yarn in the Ocean Drive colourway for this cardigan because I know that I used about two and a half skeins for this one and it's knitted in this gorgeous new base, which is merino silk and yak. So that's 60% merino, 20% silk and 20% yak, and it's lovely and soft. And I also knitted my um, Wishes cardigan that I knitted recently in the same base, but I did like a mustardy tone over the top of it. Um, so that's obviously a different color, but I just thought I'd do a different colorway um, and knit this cardigan again. So I have got that much left of my first skein at the moment and I've got two more of these so I should have plenty to finish the cardigan. So I'm knitting the cardigan on the needle suggested in the pattern, that's a 3.75mm needle and I got gauge on my previous cardigan um, and it's a very similar thickness so I didn't actually gauge swatch which is a little bit naughty because I think yarn can make a difference sometimes but I think that um, there's enough leeway just to get away with not doing a uh, gauge swatch on this time. So that's my progress on my cardigan and I have cast on a new pair of socks. Well I say a new pair of socks but I'm knitting a sock tube out of it so that it's nice and easy. So this is going to be just a sock tube. I've done a cuff at the top and I'm going to keep knitting right until where I get to nearly the end of the yarn. So what I'll do to measure so I've got plenty of yarn to do the rows for the cuff and also the bind off is that I'll use because I've got 12 rows of ribbing here and then um, obviously one row of bind off. I'll make sure that I've got 
13 meters left at the very end of the sock tube of this yarn so that I can work up as much of this yarn as possible and then that should leave me with just enough for the yarn tail to cast off um, that's how I work out how much I need so I normally count one row as about a meter and I normally do a sort of 60 64 um, stitch sock on 2.5 millimeter needles so that I, I normally need about a meter for that and I'll normally end up with a little bit left over so this is a opal yarn that I've got in my shop this is from the opal beauty 2 range and it's called twin summit and it's the colorway number 11152 but I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below um, so my mum was having a look at the yarns that I've got in my shop and she picked this one so I've been um, knitting away on this little sock tube nice and easy to knit so it's got some pink and purple and some sort of orangey corally colors in there um, and I just thought that was a nice blend of all the colors and that's how it looks when it's knitted up on 2.5 millimeter needles on a 64 stitch sock and that's what it looks like in the ball of yarn in the skein so what I'm planning to do is knit in a big sock tube with a cuff either end and then I will be splitting that into two pairs of socks and I have a tutorial for that on this channel and I'll leave a link to that in the description bar and also in the tab at the top of the page there so basically what I'm going to be doing is basically using the true afterthought heel technique to cut this tube into four socks and then also use the true afterthought heel to add heels into those as well. But I'll use a contrast colour um, because I'm going to be using as much as this yarn up as possible. So now onto my crochet section and I have done a little bit of work on my Ziggy Interrupted and this is almost one of the first panels sort of finished and I think I've got about six or seven of these to do to finish the whole of the wrap. So this is called the Ziggy Interrupted Wrap by Sandra from the Cherry Heart Podcast and it is a crocheted wrap and my camera for some reason doesn't always pick up purples very well but this is a very very deep purple. A slightly less deep purple and those two are a ducky darlings yarns they're actually the same colorway but this darker one is on a different base so the yarn base underneath makes the makes the yarn look of a darker color then I've got these other two yarns that I've picked this one is snail's pace by the woolen witch and this one is love letter by the camel's yarn and I chose those four colors to go together specifically to make the ziggy interrupted and I got them all from the East Anglia yarn festival um, earlier on this year and I'm really pleased I picked those it's a nice subtle sort of contrast because it's quite a busy wrap with all the little crocheted squares and these zigzag bits and I think that sort of tones it down nicely so I'm getting on nicely with that so I'm now onto my sewing section and I have a finished penny rug so this I started a few weeks ago at a class that my lovely friend Pam took at my local quilt group so she'd drawn out the patterns for various little motifs and I put together these motifs out of the ones that she'd drawn out um, which I think was lovely and I, I've put together some leaves some flowers and a couple of hairs in the middle so I've got a, a mummy and a baby and then I surrounded it with the heart version of the penny rug so traditionally the penny rug is made out of circles around the edge because it was from sort of Victorian times where they were using up scrap fabric and they would only really have um, templates like a penny to draw around to make the shapes to go around it and years ago the UK um, pennies used to be quite large um, so they were near enough the size of these sort of heart shapes but I chose these hearts because I thought they looked really pretty so they're basically layers of felt on top of each other and I've used a blanket stitch to sew them together and if you look closely I've done some chain stitches for the detail on some of the leaves I've added an eye and some whisk for the little hairs and I'm really pleased with how that's come out so I kept my background hearts all the same color and then I've used the colors that I have in the main part um, of the penny rug in the layers of the hearts on the outside as well so that's what it looks like on the back as well so it's just a double layer 
felt so it's got a nice neat backing and this would be traditionally used as a rug for like candles and things but I feel like I shouldn't be putting too much on it because it would sort of spoil the detail on it. Pam, she hasn't got her patterns online just yet but if you email her and I'll pop her email address in the description bar down below so that you can get in touch with her she will sell the patterns um, via email. Um, but there we go. So I used felt that is a mixture of acrylic and wool because I really like the wool content um, and also I love this sort of mottled effect rather than just using solid coloured felt I think the textured heathered effect looks really nice. Where I got the felt from was a mixture of um, paper and string and also my local sewing shop. I'll leave a link to the paper and string online shop in the description bar down below um, and they had quite a range of different colours of all the different heathered felts so I'm really pleased I finished that. I think my mum is going to actually have this because I've seen her when we went to Centre Park she said oh Ellie I love that so I think this is going to be gifted to my mum um, because she really liked it. So that is the sewing that I've been up to this week. Pop that out of the way. And next I have my blast from the past and as promised I'm going to show you my sparkle cardigan that I made previously. So you can see that I did the three quarter length sleeves so the original pattern was a full length sleeves but I did shorten them because I very often pull them up anyway and I end up with um, the cuffs all being all sort of wrinkled up so I thought well better to do a shorter one for me and I did a slightly shorter length as well. The original cardigan was quite long I think but I just did it just to the waist so that I could wear it with lots of dresses as well um, and this colour actually goes with loads of my dresses which is really good. So I'll just show you around the back and you can see that um, on the one I'm knitting I've got just to just under the armpit with the panels at the front and the back as well. But this is knitted in my own hand dyed yarn in the pretty and pink colourway and this is a merino and nylon based yarn um, that I use for this particular one. And I found some little shell buttons in my stash that I thought went really nicely and it's a V neck shaped cardigan which I think goes nicely with lots of things. I, I can do it up but I don't often do it up anyway um, just because I often am quite warm. Um, and I think it works nicely just open. There we are, there is my sparkle cardigan. I did actually, um, I cast off around the neck in a, quite a stable cast off because I didn't want it to stretch too much but I could have done with just leaving it a little bit looser so that uh, it would lay at the same length as the back because when the cardigan was blocked obviously I pulled it out slightly and it did stretch a little bit so I could have done with doing the bind off just slightly looser so I will do that in my next one. So my next section is confessions. Oh dear. So I'd run out of my Ashmead Designs hexiforms. So I went onto the website and I thought right I'm just going to get some hexagons because I really like the half inch ones so I bought some of those and then I thought ooh look at these. <laughs> There was all these different shapes that would fit in with hexagons, so I could not resist. I've got these petal shaped ones, which fit with the hexagon on one side and then they're sort of rounded, so that's a, a petal shape. And then I saw the kite shapes, which also fit in with the half an inch hexagons I've already been using because I love that size. Then the jewel ones, I just love those as well, so I had to have some of those. And then I saw half hexagons because there's loads of options for doing patterns with those. Oh dear, it goes on. <laughs> I then got some dual petals. So they've got like a wedge shape this side and rounded on that side. I couldn't resist. And nearly last of all, diamonds, which fit in with the hexagons as well. And then I saw some of these bigger double diamond shapes which I've got some plans for. So they're all from Ashmead Designs and I will leave a link to their shop in the description bar down below. It is quite a sort of an old fashioned website um, where there's not a lot of photographs but everything's quite easy to follow 
and they, you don't get an email notification to say that you've put your order in so don't panic if you don't get that there's a note when you've actually placed your order that if you check your PayPal account you can see whether the money's gone out and then when you receive your order and you'll get a receipt which is like a printed letter like this um, and actually with my order probably because I spent so much <laughs> I had quite a few information sheets on how to do the English paper piecing and how to use particular shapes um, hexiforms which is good and then also a an idea sheet to show which shapes to put with different shapes so I thought that was brilliant um, so well worth placing an order with Ashmi designs and it's really lovely quality paper as well so I was very very naughty buying all those but I had actually run out of the half inch hexagons so I, it was inevitable I had to place an order <laughs> So I have been working a little bit on um, my box here. I'm working on the lining, but I was doing some decorating on the inside of the box. So that's why I've purchased them. Um, I will show you my progress next week on what I've actually done in terms of piecing those hexagons together or, or hexagon related shapes. So that is my confessions for this week. A bit naughty, but you know, I felt inspired, so I had to go and buy them. <laughs> So my next section is shop update. So I just wanted to mention that the July yarn clubs will be available from tomorrow, that's the 24th of June, until the 3rd of July. And the July yarn clubs will be shipped on the 8th of July. But I will also list July and August in combination as well. So if you want to buy two months yarn clubs, you can purchase those in one transaction so you can save on postage. But that does mean that you'll have to wait for the August yarn clubs to be dyed up so they won't be posted till August. If you buy July on their own, they will be shipped on the 8th of July. So, last of all, it's Jensen's little appearance. So over to you, Jensen. Hello, Jensen. Jensen's showing us his lovely blanket from our friend Sharon and it's the Harry Potter themed blanket isn't it Jensen? He hasn't quite decided what house he'd like to be in yet <laughs> but it's got all the lovely Harry Potter colours isn't it Jensen? Yeah! <laughs> this week he had his second haircut so he looks all nice and smart don't you Jensen? Yeah! <laughs> And um, this is a beautiful crochet blanket in all the Harry Potter colours. So, and Jensen's very, very pleased. He said, thank you very much, Sharon. <laughs> and I like to use his crochet blankets, not only when it's really cold, but for him to play on on the, on the carpet to keep it all nice and soft. Thank you very much, Jensen. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!